Hey everyone, I'm Ali from Learn Awesome and in this video I will help you prepare a coding environment for web development which includes editing HTML files as well as JavaScript. The part I love about HTML is its simplicity. It's a text-based language and unlike other well-known programming languages, it stays this way all the way. You don't need to compile it or something, you just create the document, open it in browser and see the visual results on screen. All heavy lifting is done by browser. This means you don't need any fancy editors or integrated development environments or IDEs, compilers, or any kind of executables to be set up on your machine. Even the most basic computer setup involves a browser and a text editor, and that is all you need to create and try out an HTML document. But unless there is some compelling need to do so, let's not fall all the way to the level of Notepad or some basic text editor, as we have an awesome alternative in the form of a lightweight, cross-platform, free-of-cost IDE called Visual Studio Code from Microsoft to work with. It's not as fancy as the proper paid Visual Studio, but as you shall soon see in this video, this free, seemingly unimpressive alternative carries quite a punch with its extension ecosystem and built-in features. May I dare to say it is the default coding environment for web development across the globe. Well, let's get past hollow praises and see this in action. So without any further delay, let's head over to the website code.visualstudio.com in your browser and then press the download link on the top right. At time of making this video, Visual Studio Code is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS platforms in the form of a less than 200 MB installer requiring less than 500 MB of disk space and requires a 1.6 GHz processor with 1 GB of RAM. If this is getting too technical, just know that you won't find any lighter alternative for the features that you are getting, so it's probably okay to go ahead and install it for your machine. So let's go ahead and do it for your favorite platform. All right, so please download the installer and execute it for your machine. I have already done so, so won't be going into details of setting it up. If you need help in setting up Visual Studio Code installer, you can go head over to this doc section where there is this getting started section and then you can click this setup link which brings up the setting up Visual Studio Code page which lists all the instructions to set up Visual Studio Code for your preferred platform. You can also select the link specific to your machine. So I'm working on Windows, so I'm gonna select that and then you'll get all the steps you need to set it up correctly on your machine. So note that while I would focus on using Visual Studio Code in context of web development only, there's excellent documentation on Visual Studio Code available on their website. You can refer to the Get Started section on the left side in the documentation and learn more about Visual Studio Code. You can watch introductory videos, make use of their tips and tricks section, and get familiar with their user interface using the excellent documentation that is being provided along with the application. This talks link is available any, uh, anywhere from the Visual Studio Code website. Please take a moment to go through the user interface section of the Get Started Guide as I'll keep focus on HTML editing and not on Visual Studio interface since there's excellent documentation and videos available on that website. At minimum, please familiarize yourself with basic layout and you can continue to learn more about Visual Studio Code on the go later as we keep using it more and more. So here's the first impression of Visual Studio Code. Apart from welcome page, which appears sometimes in the start, it's kind of a blank state to begin with. Now, one important note regarding VS Code, especially for those who are used to working with proper Visual Studio, VS Code uses your folder hierarchy on disk to organize files. It does not have concept or solution or projects, which is shocking for most developers coming from proper Visual Studio background, myself included, but that initial shock is offset soon enough and it's not as limiting as it first seems. What makes Visual Studio Code the universal coding environment is extensions, which can be invoked from this button right over here. Extensions are pieces of functionality that can be developed and made available for Visual Studio Code by third parties. For working with HTML, there is an excellent extension in Visual Studio Code called Live Preview, developed by not from a third, but first party Microsoft itself. To install that, all you need to do is click on it and then we have the details of the live preview extension and let's read out what it is, an extension that hosts a local server for you to preview your web projects on, right? So I have it installed already. So this button would say install for you. So just go ahead and press install, wait for installation to finish. 
you can read more about this extension here or on their web page. So Live Preview extension would run a local web server to show a web preview, kind of a mini browser right there in Visual Studio Code, and it would render the HTML document we create as a web page, as we type. Isn't it amazing? We can see our web page taking shape as we edit our HTML document without having to endlessly save and reload the file in browser. Okay, our coding environment is now set up and we can now create our first HTML document in Visual Studio Code. To do that, we need to either do file, new file from the menu and type in the file name like my first HTML file.html and then pressing enter and it would prompt you to save the file somewhere on the disk which you can go ahead and do that the other way to do that is to go to the explorer view and click this new file icon but this is going to create a new untitled text file so like this and uh, again you have the option to do file save as and select, uh, save the file somewhere on the disk and make sure to select the appropriate extension over here. Otherwise it can save the file as a text file. So your file name.html.txt, make sure you always select the HTML extension uh, or type before saving the file. So let, uh, let me do, go ahead and do so. So my first HTML file and I press save and you can see it created the file. The path to file is appearing over here. And if there was a long file path with uh, lots of subfolders, they would appear as breadcrumbs up top over here. So my file is appearing over here, but you must have observed that it is complaining that you have not opened a folder yet. Well, we saved our file. So what is its problem, you must be wondering. So do recall, I mentioned that Visual Studio Code is different from regular Visual Studio or other editors in the sense that it organizes your contents based on folder structure and not some abstract project or solution system. To get the best results out of Visual Studio Code, it is suggested to create a top level project folder for your project and then either open that folder or start or launch Visual Studio Code from that top level project. So you can have a hierarchy defined inside that top level folder to organize your file and assets. To do that, you can either use this open folder button or file open folder menu option from a running Visual Studio Code instance to browse to your project top level project folder. Or there's another way where you can go to your command prompt and in the top level project folder that you have defined for your, uh, for your project, you can just type code space dot, where dot stands for the current folder in Windows operating system and uh, many other systems as well, like Linux, and press enter. And it is going to open a new Visual Studio Code window with the context being your top level folder that you selected as the project folder. And any hierarchy you create within it would not only be saved on the disk, but also be reflected here. So now you can create subfolders like source and images, etc., where you can organize your files like this. I'm moving the file here. And I can also create my files here. So now this time, if I press this new file icon, it is prompting me to provide the file name. So if I say my second HTML file.html, the file would be instantly created and you would be able to edit it right there and then. I must mention that if you open a folder that you have, haven't opened before, it sometimes uh, gives you a pop-up asking you if you trust the author of contents of the folder to which you can press yes. This is a safeguard as folder can contain executable files that may contain malicious code. So anytime you open a new folder, you would be asked this question and need to decide. For folder you created yourself, you would always pick yes, unless you write viruses as a hobby and don't trust the author. But I doubt you would be watching my video then as this is too primitive for advanced skill set you possess your highness. All right, so we are almost ready to start editing our HTML file. But first, let's launch the live preview. So you do so by clicking the live preview icon, which is showing up right over here on top right of the editor window with this hourglass below this two panes, right? So let me click it. 
So clicking that button opened a blank side panel with address bar referring to 127001-3000 uh, and your file name. So 127001 is the IP address to your local system, also known as local host sometimes, and means we want to connect to a web server running locally on your machine, which Live Preview extension does. So now there can be many web servers running on your machine, so you want to direct it to the one that is utilizing port 3000, which is default for Live Preview extension, indicated in the address sign followed by a colon sign. So as you edit the file now, the local web server of your Live Preview extension would show its content in the preview pane. So currently it's blank as our file is blank. To check if it is working, quickly type something like hello over there in your text editor and you should see hello appear in the preview pane as well as HTML as a web page. Right, your HTML coding environment is now fully set up. In the next video, we shall start adding content to the HTML files and see the results in preview panel. So if you liked the video so far, please don't forget to like and share this video and consider subscribing to our channel to keep informed about upcoming content. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.